Disney's new $500 Skip the Line Pass has finally been revealed, and what are they thinking? Hello everybody, welcome. This new Lightning Lane Premiere Pass has everybody asking the question, has Bob Paycheck finally returned to Disney? Today we are going to break down this new Skip the Line system, we're going to compare it to Universal's Express Pass, and we'll talk about is this a good thing for Disney, or is it a bad thing? Ever since Disney got rid of the old FastPass system and replaced it with the individual Lightning Lanes and Genie Plus system, people have been pretty much universally unhappy with the system and asking for the old FastPass system to come back. Now just a few months ago, Disney pretty much did just that. They brought back the old FastPass system. For the most part, this new single pass and multi-pass experience that replaced the Genie Plus and individual Lightning Lane passes is what I call the FastPass minus system because it's not quite as good as the old FastPass system. Now it is better than what we had with Genie Plus and ILL, but it's still not as good as the old FastPass system. So I call it FastPass minus. On the other hand, you have Universal, which has their Express Pass system, which conversely to Disney, everyone pretty much agrees universally that Universal's Express Pass is pretty good and is relatively a fair system. So I've been saying for a long time on my videos, why doesn't Disney, if they can't use the old FastPass system, if they can't quite get it right, why don't they just move to like the Universal Express Pass system? Why not just go in that direction? Well, it seems that they finally listened and they've done just that. They've implemented this new Lightning Lane Premier Pass, which is essentially very similar to Universal's Express Pass, except it kind of isn't and it's not quite as good. So let's jump right in and talk about this new Lightning Lane Premier Pass system and how it works. Now I wanna make sure I say, for now, they still have the original single pass and multi pass system, uh, which I do a full breakdown video of. You're gonna wanna check that link below. I'll put it in the description down there if you wanna know all about the new single pass multi pass system that replaced Genie Plus and in individual Lightning Lane. You can wanna check that video out because this is still in play. It's got all the pricing, all the details on how to actually use it. But they are now adding this new system on top of that. And this new Lightning Lane Premier Pass goes into effect on October 30th of 2024. And you will be able to buy this as of 7 o'clock a.m. up to seven days before your first stay at Disney. If you're staying at a Disney resort seven days prior to that first day up to 14 day window, you'll be able to buy at 7 o'clock a.m. on that morning uh, this Lightning Lane Premier Pass for your party. You'll buy this on the My Disney Experience app. You want to have all your party members connected. You'll buy it just like you do the single pass and multi pass options and the old Genie Plus options. Now, here's the catch this new system is only available for deluxe hotel members. Let me say that again. This is only available to guests staying at deluxe resorts. There are a few other resorts that are included in that sort of deluxe package like the swan and the dolphin etc but you're you're talking things like the disney's contemporary resort the wilderness lodge the polynesian the grand floridian those types of resorts if you're not staying at a resort like that this is not an option for you at least right now they are referring to this as a pilot program they're also doing it at disneyland not just at disney world and the pricing is somewhat similar and it's pretty much the same system now, as far as the pricing goes for this new system, it's going to be $129 up to $449 per person per day. Now, that $449 price tag is hefty, and it is most likely going to be for Magic Kingdom specifically during peak times. So you're thinking holidays like the Christmas season that's coming up, uh, potentially even Thanksgiving weekend. Those sorts of time frames for Magic Kingdom specifically, some of the places that'll be more on the $129 of that spectrum are probably gonna be places like Animal Kingdom where the park doesn't stay open quite as long, there's not as many attractions, you're not gonna get as much use out of it, and there's not as much demand in those parks. So just like everything else, Disney, the price is gonna be subject to how many people are going to the parks, what time of year it is, uh, and which park you're gonna be going to. Now this price is in addition to your entry pass into the park. 
just like every other Express Pass anywhere else. So here's the big difference and why it's so expensive. This is a one-time use pass for any attraction in the park. Pretty much every attraction in the parks has a lightning lane entry point. There are a few that don't, but those are the things that don't really have a line. So you don't have to worry about it. Pretty much every ride, if you think in Magic Kingdom, you're talking Space Mountain, Tron, Tiana's Bayou, Big Thunder Mountain, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean, Haunted Mansion, all the rides that have any sort of wait time to them are gonna be part of this, but it is a one-time entry only, which means you don't get to ride Space Mountain five times in one day, unless you wanna wait in the standby line. The key also here is that there is no reservation required from a ride perspective. So in the single pass and the multi-pass experiences, you have to pick a specific ride time, you have to you find a window of opportunity, you have to get a reservation for it, it may be out for the day, so you may not even get to use it. This, this system skips all of that. You don't have to do that. You can show up to any ride at any time and just get right into the lightning lane pass line. So that is a really nice feature because it removes all the complexity of having to be on your phone, having to try to figure out when the next time is, am I gonna miss it, and panicking all the time. All you gotta do is just buy this thing, just go to the park and walk around and just like you own the place, go right into the lightning lane, easy breezy, no problem, good to go. But you are paying for it and that is no joke. It also includes photo pass for the day, so you get access to all of your pictures for the specific rides that have photo pass, any sort of like photo lenses, digital downloads, all of that, you get that included in this price. But this does have limited availability, don't know how that availability is. It will more than likely sell out for specific days, so if you don't buy it ahead of time, you don't buy it right when you can, you may not be able to do it at all. So limited availability, that availability may get bigger or smaller depending on once the pilot program is over, how they see how it goes, it could change. So this has got a lot of people talking about this system. A lot of people. I mean, that's a lot of money. Thinking, you know, almost $500 per person for this thing. You're talking, you know, one day at Magic Kingdom costing you maybe up to a, an additional $2,500 for one day at Magic. You got five people in your party. Five people. That's $2,500 in addition to the price you already paid to get into the park. So you're talking, you know, three to $4,000 to go to Magic Kingdom for one day. That's a lot of money, which again, it's got everybody talking. It seems like this passes for the super rich. Not only is it only available to deluxe resort members, so you're already got the people who are already paying a ton of money to stay at the deluxe resorts. Now on top of that, having to pay this huge astronomical sum to get this sort of fast pass experience, this skip the line experience, man, that's a lot of money. I'm not saying people out there don't have that money. I don't. And I know most people don't. So for me, I don't know how much use this is going to get. We'll see. Um, I'm kind of hoping it doesn't get a lot of use because it's going to make things even worse if they keep the single pass and multi-pass experiences on top of that. So let's talk about the DAS Pass. You know Disney cracked down on the DAS Pass. There was a lot of abuse going on with that, but there were a lot of people who really needed the DAS Pass. So it's got all these people talking now saying, well, now I see why they cracked down on the DAS Pass. Now I know why they uh, cut DAS Pass off from everybody because they, were, they had this new system coming and they wanted as many people to buy it as possible. So almost people were saying, this is almost another level of money grab, which is, hey, we're not going to give you a DAS pass because we don't think you need it, but hey, you can go buy this thing for 500 bucks and uh, you can skip the lines, go ahead. Uh, which I don't know that that's true, but it does beg the question. It does make you think, right? Because the timing is a little interesting. So the big problem that I see with this system is a couple of things. One, it's only available to Deluxe Resort. What's up with that? Why do I have to stay at the Deluxe Resort in order to use this pass? If I want to stay at an all-star resort, or I want to stay at my favorite resort, which is Port Orleans Riverside, which is a moderate resort, it's just my personal favorite resort, I can't buy this pass if I really want to. I think that doesn't make any sense to me at all. It makes sense the way they do it at Universal, which I'll talk about in just a minute. We also have the issue of single pass, multi-pass, DAS passes, virtual queues, all on top of this new Lightning Lane Premier Pass. This is too much stuff, too much complexity, multiple passes. How many people are gonna be in these Lightning Lane lines? Is it, is it even gonna be a skip the line queue at that point? You got all these people going through that line. 
Uh, I think Guardians of the Galaxy, the virtual queue has already got a ton of people for it. You already got a lot of people buying the Lightning Pass to get into this thing. And then on top of that, you got people with DAS Passes trying to get on this thing. And then on top of that, you got a new Lightning Lane Premier Pass where people were trying to get in. And then you got VIP, let's not even talk about the VIP tours that give you basically front of the line passes to get into things. I mean, the standby line's gonna be a train wreck. I mean, it's already kind of a train wreck to be honest. So you're probably sitting there thinking, I don't know why this guy's going off on this new system. Wasn't he the one that was just saying, well, Universal does it and it works great. Yes, I was. Let's get to that right now. How is Universal's Express Pass different from this particular system and why does it work? Let's start off with the pricing with Universal's Express Pass. It's pretty expensive, and I've said that from the beginning, it's kind of pricey, which is actually a good thing because it keeps the number of people purchasing it to a minimum. For a one park Express Pass at Universal, which allows you one time usage per ride, pretty much comparable to what this new Premier Pass is at Disney, that's gonna run you between $89 a person and $289 a person. So still cheaper, 89 to 289, versus 129 to 449. Still a lot cheaper than what you're getting at Disney. This is one-time use. They also have an unlimited Express Pass. And that's $119 to $339. Again, same availability issues, you know, depending on the time of year and how crowded it's gonna be, how many people are buying these passes, that price tag is going to change. But either way, this is an unlimited Express Pass, meaning I can ride the same ride over and over and over and over and over again, no limitations whatsoever. And that price tag is still cheaper than Disney's new Lightning Lane Premier Pass. Now here's where it gets interesting. If you stay at a Universal Deluxe Resort, handful of deluxe resorts, you get the unlimited version of the Express Pass for free. It is included in the price of your hotel stay. So I'll use the word free fairly loosely because you're paying for it in your hotel stay, but it's included for your whole stay. This is not a single day thing. This isn't a, I get an unlimited express pass at Universal for one day. If I'm staying seven days at a deluxe resort, guess what? I get unlimited express pass for all seven days. So that is a massive benefit uh, and really does make you want to stay at the deluxe resorts because it's such a great deal. So most people who have the express pass at Universal are doing the deluxe resort stays. Very few people go out and purchase the additional 100 to $350 Express Pass. There's very few people that do that. Most people just stay at a deluxe resort. It just makes sense. So not only does it incentivize people to stay at the deluxe resorts, it keeps people from just willy-nilly going off and buying the Express Pass and then having lots of capacity issues at the park and people having to wait in really long standby lines because there's just less people overall trying to buy this Express Pass. The other thing about Universal's Express Pass, you can pretty much buy it at any time. There's really no restriction. There's no this special thing about seven days prior to me st uh, staying at a Universal hotel. I can buy this. You can buy it. I could buy it right now for three months away from now. I can see. It also doesn't really ever sell out. I don't think I've pretty much rarely seen any unavailability day by day by day. It's pretty much always available. Price just fluctuates. You can buy it. So it's pretty simple, pretty easy. But again, most people are just staying at the resorts and getting the free Express Pass. Now here's where it's extremely different. There are no other options at Universal. They don't have a virtual queue. They don't have a single pass. They don't have the multi-pass experience. They just have the one express pass, which again, limits the number of people trying to go through that express queue, which drags out the standby line to kingdom come. I mean, like the, the, the lines at Disney and the standby are really rough. Also, Universal is much better about letting a certain number of people in through the standby line, uh, ratio wise so disney i've i've actually did a youtube short on this and a TikTok on this where i recorded the number of people that disney was allowing through the lightning lane experience before they were letting people in the standby experience go and the ratio was about a um, hundred people per lightning lane that they allow through they were letting about five to ten people through the standby line so that's a 10 times the amount of people are going through Lightning Pass. So if you think about how long that standby line is, it may seem short, but you're gonna be in there for an hour or two hours because of the fact that everybody in the Lightning Pass is just going, 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 going. I get it, they paid money, they should get to do that, but Universal does a better job of that, keeping that ratio down to where you're in standby, but your standby line just feels kind of like it's moving pretty well and there's not as many people, again, not as many people trying to use this system. 
So overall, Universal's system just plain works better. It's just a better system. In order for this to work at Disney, they're gonna have to get rid of the single pass and the multi-pass experiences, or they're gonna have to severely, severely limit the number of these Lightning Lane Premier Passes that are available. Um, I just think it's gonna get way too unwieldy. There's The standby line is already moves super slow and it is going to come to a complete crawl. It's gonna be a disaster. Overall, I'm not really sure how to feel about this system. Um, I'm, I'm very tentative about it. Still feels like Universal to me is better system and cheaper. So Disney kind of stole this idea from Universal but then implemented it uh, poorly implemented it less effectively. I really think we're gonna have to have one or the other, not both systems. I'm not a fan of how this feels like it's for the super rich. Doesn't feel like it's really for anybody else. Not really sure it's gonna be worth it, time will tell. It also feels like yet another money grab from Disney. Every time I turn around, it just feels like there's another money grab from Disney, which is why I keep asking, did Bob, did Bob Paycheck come back to Disney? Like, what's the deal? Because he's been gone for a while, but yet I keep seeing money grabs happening over and over again. So was Bob Paycheck really the problem? It's starting to feel more and more like he wasn't the problem. He was the scapegoat. Um, but I'm still gonna give him his nickname of Bob Paycheck. So, so many people out there are already struggling to be able to afford to go to Disney. This certainly isn't helping the situation. It's not going to help the wait times at all. Let me know what you think down in the comments. What are your thoughts about this new pass? Do you think it's a good idea? Do you think it's a bad idea? Are you excited about it? Or are you just thinking, yep, another thing that Disney decided they were going to take from Universal and then do poorly? Um, I'd love to hear from you. Hit me in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts. Be sure to like, subscribe, share. Until I see you next time, the no boy is the easy way. Bye-bye, everybody.